Hi guys and welcome back to Wealth and Wisdom. Today we're going to talk about The Wolf of Wall Street, the great book from Jordan Belfort. You probably know the book, you are probably read it or if not you have probably looked and watched the movie. Today we're going to go after the quotes, the, some of the best quotes from the book and we're going to talk about what is it in it for you. So. Without further ado, let us start. So, Jordan Belfort says, Act as if. Act as if you are a wealthy man, rich already, and then you will surely become rich. Act as if you have unmatched confidence, and then people will surely have confidence in you. Act as if you have unmatched experience, and then people will follow your advice. And act as if you are already a tremendous success, and... As sure as I stand here today, you will become successful. Interesting facts. There has been some uh, studies regarding this act as if, even though most of the time it does not work like that, because we have seen in CBT, cognitive behavior therapy, that we have to change first how we think, how we process information, how we're looking at the situation. So if you can change the beliefs that you have about yourself and about your world, it is much more uh, certain that you're going to become that which you're acting as if. So, as the Buddha says, you become what you think most about and you become how you act. So, acting or behaving in a certain way acts like a snowball effect which enables you to become much better. Quote number two. You don't choose who you fall in love with, do you? And once you do fall in love, that obsessive sort of love, that all-consuming love where two people can stand to be apart from each other for even a moment, how are you supposed to let a love like that pass you by? This is the emotion that we all are striving for and if you can find the love for your work, for your job, and the love for your partner, that's an ideal situation. If you want to be rich, never give up. People tend to give up. If you have persistence, you will come out ahead of most people. More importantly, you will learn. When you do something, you might fail. But that's not because you're a failure. It's because you have not learned enough. Do it differently each time. One day you will do it right. Failure is your friend. Again, which we are always talking in cognitive behavioral therapy plus wisdom therapy, we always talk about the growth principle that we can grow, we can become better, we can move forward, we can get ahead of this situation. So it is important to know in every situation that it's uh, this, if you say to yourself that you are a loser and that you're losing, that you're not good at all, then you tend to attract that. It is important to know that it is a situation, maybe you're the first time in it and you can grow, you tend to grow. Without action, the best intentions in the world are nothing more than that, intentions. Of course, logical situation, if we do not take action, then nothing will result of it. But I will go even deeper in cognitive behavior, in CBT, cognitive behavior therapy. I say that you have first to believe, and when you believe in something in yourself, then action is going to be much more simpler. Jordan, there's no nobility in poverty. I want you. To back yourself into a corner. Give yourself no choice but to succeed. Let the consequences of failure become so dire and so unthinkable that you will have no choice but do whatever it takes to succeed. So he's advising us to put ourselves in a situation where we have no choice but to succeed. That's why some people say that taking a loan is actually a good thing because it makes you motivated because you know that you have to succeed you know that you have to go ahead and you know that you need that thing to go good 
the easiest way to make money is to create something of such value that everybody wants and go out and give and create value. The money comes automatically. So if you think about money and how it is created, it is essentially an exchange of values. So you have something of value and you trade with somebody else that has uh, value. And if you think, if you look at the situations from this point of view, you will see, you will see that uh, money is just the thing that we use to give value to the thing. So we say this thing costs one thousand dollars, for example, because we attach to it such and such value. So it is important to look at this from different perspectives and. If you're looking at becoming more successful in life and in attaining more money, if you desire so, it is important to think about what value can you actually create. I've got the guts to die. What I want to know is, have you got the guts to live? They were drunk on youth, fueled by greed and higher than kitties. And from the time I was a kid, I had this internal monologue roaring through my head, which doesn't stop, unless I'm asleep. I'm sure every person has this, it's just that my monologue is particularly loud and particularly troublesome. I'm constantly asking myself questions. And the problem with that is that your brain is like a computer. If you ask a question, it's programmed to respond, whether there is an answer or not. I am constantly weighing everything in my mind and trying to predict how my actions will influence events. Or maybe manipulate events are the more appropriate words. It's like playing a game of chess with your own life, and I hate fucking chess. Interesting thing. Although if you think about how our brains work and how our subconscious works, you will notice that if you ask yourself the questions, for example, before you go to sleep, if you ask yourself the questions, you will notice that most of the times the answers will come. And my wife, well, I guess she'd earned her sin with me, but still, did she really ha have that much reason to be angry? I mean, when she married me, she knew what she was getting into, didn't she? She had been my mistress, for Chris's sake. That spoke volumes, didn't it? The three of us exchanged glances but said nothing. After all, what was there to say? The truth was that hookers did take credit cards, or at least ours did. In fact, hookers were so much a part of the Stratton subculture that we classified them like publicly traded stocks. Blue chips were considered the top of the line hookers Z creme de la creme. They were usually struggling young mothers or exceptionally beautiful college girls in desperate need of tuition or designer clothing, and for a few thousand dollars they would do almost anything imaginable, either to you or to each other. Next came the Nasdaqs, who were one step down from the blue chips. They were priced between three and five hundred dollars and made you wear a condom unless you gave them a hefty tip, which I always did. Then came the pink shit hookers who were the lowest form of all, usually a street walker or the start of low class hooker who showed up in response to desperate late night phone call to a number in Screw Magazine or the Yellow Pages. They usually cost a hundred dollars or less and if you didn't wear a condom you'd get a penicillin shot the next day and then pray that your dick didn't fall off. Anyway, the blue chip took credit cards. so. What was wrong with writing them off on your taxes? After all, the IRS knew about this sort of stuff, didn't they? In fact, back in the good old days when getting blasted over lunch was considered normal, corporate behavior. The IRS referred to these types of expenses as three martini lunches. They even had an accounting term for it. It was called T&D, which stood for travel and entertainment. All I would done was taken the small liberty of moving things to their logical conclusion, changing the T and D to T and A, tits and S. <laughs> if I earn a million dollars a week and the average American earns a thousand dollars a week, then when I spend twenty thousand dollars on something is the equivalent of the average American spending twenty dollars on something, right? Maybe. 
But what I sincerely hope is that my life serves as a cautionary tale to the rich and poor alike, to anyone who's living with a spoon up their nose and a bunch of pills dissolving in their stomach sack, or to any person who's considered taking a God-given gift and misusing it, to anyone who decides to go to the dark side of the force and live a life of unbridled hedonism, and to anyone who thinks there's anything glamorous about being known as the Wolf of Wall Street, it's the book one. Inside the restaurant, young Stratonis carried on the time-honored tradition of acting like packs of untamed wolves. Patricia smiled and we walked in silence for a while, but it wasn't a poisonous silence. It was the sort of silence shared by two people who are comfortable enough not to force a conversation ahead of logical progression. I found this woman company to be incredibly soothing. Victor was a Chinese by birth and Jervis by injection, having been raised amid the most savage Jews anywhere along Long Island, the towns of Jericho and Syosset. I had considered changing my phone number, but I was so far behind on my phone bill that Ninex was after me too. Listen guys, fucking around with my meat gets ain't no joke. Pound for pound they are stronger than grizzly bears and if you want to know the truth, they happen to scare the living shit out of me. So before I approve this midget tossing business, you need to find me a game warden who can reign in the little critter if he should go up deep end. Then we're going to need some trank darts, a pair of hands and a can mess. I laughed right along with her, but inside I was dying. There were certain things that you just didn't joke about. It was simply bad luck. It was like pissing in the face god eye. If you did it long enough, he was certain to piss right back at you. And his urine stream was like fucking fire hose. I don't think you are cut out for this job. You look like a kid. And Wall Street's no place for kids. It's a place for killers. A place for mercenaries. So, in that sense, you're lucky I'm not the one who does the hiring around here. But what was wrong with that? They were drunk or nude, fueled by greed and higher than kitties. Contrary to previous assumptions, young men and women who possesses the collective social grace of herd of sex crazed water buffalo and have an intelligence quotient in the range of Forrest Gump on three hits of acid can be taught to sound like Wall Street wizards as long as you write every last word down to the the dam and then keep drilling it into their heads again and again, every day, twice a day, for a year straight. So it's about repetition, repetition, repetition. People don't buy stock. It gets sold to them. Don't ever forget them. And some quotes from the movie. Let me tell you something. There's no nobility in poverty. I've been a rich man, I've been a poor man. And I chose rich every F time. Still, give, give them to me young, hungry and stupid. And in no time I will make them rich. You know, just people say the S word. I don't even know. I don't even listen to it half the time. The only thing standing between you and your goal is the bullshit story you keep telling yourself as to why you can't achieve it. And that's actually a very important quote. Because usually it's the things that we are telling ourselves why we can do something that is holding us back. And because of that, we have... We have to move ahead. We have to go over that. We have to go over this objection as he talks about in his video, in his book and so other places. It's business. Leave your emotions at the door. Work until your bank account looks like a phone number. 97% of the people who quit too soon are employed by the 3% who didn't. So it's about grit and going ahead. Hard work beats talent, every time, as usually. It's like grit, we're moving forward, 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 without backing down. I want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich. And by becoming rich, you can sort things out. You want to know what money sounds like? Go to trading floor on Wall Street. One thing I can promise you is that I never ask my clients to judge me on my winners. I ask them to judge me on my losers because I have so few. 
and the real question is this was all that legal absolutely not but we were making more more money than we knew what to do with and that's how it ended bad for jordan and but i think that jordan um, moved ahead great he is doing now a great job with his uh, podcast and with the videos that he's making and his seminars that he's doing around the world and his uh, recent youtube youtube videos that he's putting out it's it's an interesting um, uh, thing to look at so if you have the time go look at it and of course read the book it's an interesting read so until next time have a great time and see ya